Well, what a night tonight. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, episode number 36. Uh, big show this week. Uh, got lots of things coming up. A fantastic quick tip. Uh, a great uh, gold hot spot. And, of course, some new product and all the gold coin and relic news. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep. Couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Okay, let's uh, get on to the show. Look, tonight, uh, a little later in the show, we're going to uh, be having uh, a look at our brand new product, so that's uh, pretty exciting. Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Um, it's uh, an unbelievable uh, thing. Kalgoorlie, uh, our gold hotspot, uh, running about, and also running about with a GPX 5000 in the wet. But let's first kick off with all the gold coin and relic news. Now, once again tonight, not a lot happening on the gold news front. Uh, still tends to be hanging around at around about that $2,300 uh, an ounce mark. Uh, when we look at that, it continues to trade in that belt uh, sideways, which is um, uh, not a good thing. Uh, it's getting up a little bit. It's just over the $3,000 or $2,300 I should say, per ounce, at around about $2,303.90 the last time I had a bit of a look there. So, can't say much more about that, but we have got some information here about our treasure stories for this week. And this week, uh, treasure stories uncovered an example of what uh, may happen if uh, you're doing the wrong thing uh, and uh, taking protected uh, relics and things like that from... Uh, the ground. So if that's um, happening there, uh, you may be able to, um, yeah, if that's happening, you may find, and I'm just trying to pick up my phone here for a second, I've gone, missed a little bit of my stuff, but I'll come back again, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, now, um, uh, so looking at this, I have um, uh, my story. So this week it's about doing the wrong thing with your metal detector. So there was an iron ore or an iron age find. Sorry about all that guys, I'm just getting myself sorted here. There's an iron age, iron age finds that were out and that was um, uh, picked up by a guy with a metal detector. Well, this guy apparently had some iron age uh, coins and he took some of those as a memento. Um, uh, very good. Uh, when they worked out that he pinched a few of them, it actually went to court um, and they were able to then, from the court, it actually ordered the uh, gentleman to actually have his metal detector destroyed. So the links are in the feed. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, uh, go across and have a look there at that story. Not a good way to do things. The next one's a bit better, this story. Um, it's actually heartening to see that there's actually a guy who um, uh, was out with his metal detector, a five-year-old boy in Leeds, and when he was wandering around, uh, he picked up a lost wedding ring with his metal detector. Now, he managed to get it returned back to the person, and he found the wedding ring uh, uh, in the, the couple's anniversary year. So it must have been an important anniversary. There's a little bit more about that story. It's a little bit more positive. Uh, you can again check the uh, links in the feed and you'll see uh, what happened there. Now, look, we did uh, see... It's great to see he's picking up those things and great to see that he's returned it back to uh, the owners as well. It'll be a, a real buzz for the owners and I think he'll probably remember it down the track. And, of course, to finish off the coin relic news uh, this time, I've got an interesting story about a homeowner who was, uh, had a bit of a, was using a treasure hunter, treasure hunter to try and solve a family rumour. The treasure hunter finds uh, a lost box, and this lost box contained $48,000, $46,000, sorry, in cash. 
The treasure hunter used a metal detector and a thing called endoscope um, with cameras on it and uh, he also had a bit of an assist from his iPhone. Within 50 minutes he had uh, recovered the metal box with the 46,000. Again, it's an interesting read, a different thing that you might uh, use a treasure hunter for, but the treasure hunter was actually able to solve the mystery for this family and they, um, uh, they got back uh, their, their money and solved the family mystery, so that was quite good. The next thing that we had coming up uh, on the show tonight was also um, the uh, reminders for the Victorian Caravan and Camping uh, Touring Super Show. So this is on Sunday the Thursday, sorry, Thursday the 13th to Sunday the 16th of May uh, 2021. Miners Den have got a stand there, it is stand 69B. Um, there's also another show coming up, so look, we'll have the GPX 6000 out there. Um, there's a, another show, uh, there's GPX 6000 be out for you to have a look at on the stand. Um, we'll also have some show specials and, of course, the MyLab Exodox 800 will be running some demos on throughout the show. So the show details of the Victorian Caravan and Camping Show, um, Sandown Race Course, I've given you the dates there. It's open from 9.30 till 5 9.30am till 5pm on most days. On the Sunday, it finishes at 4. Uh, the get are about 18 bucks. Concession gets you in for 15. If you're under 15 or a child under 15, is free with a paying adult. So if we don't see you there and it's not your area, why not drop into it and see us at the Bendigo uh, leisure Fest or Lifestyle and Leisure Show. Uh, Miners Den Bendigo are going to be exhibiting and having a stand there. Uh, we'll be offering uh, super show specials as well as uh, the usual demos on the Mind Lab range of detectors. And pop out, we can take you out, give you a bit of a run through on the machine, show you what it's for. Um, and as usual, the Mind Lab GPX 6000 metal detector will be on the stand. Drop into stand X1 and have a chat with the team there. Now, the show details for the Bendigo Lifestyle and Leisure Show, Bendigo Showgrounds, on Friday the 28th uh, through to Sunday the 30th of May. Tickets on this one, 12 bucks for adults, 10 bucks for concession, under 16, free with a paying adult. Uh, 10 to 5 a.m. and again on the Sunday the show closes at 4 p.m. Now, that uh, has most of the news and things. If you want to check any of that stuff there, drop on to theminersden.com.au, check the events, uh, check the links in the feed. There's plenty of information. If you're not sure, you want to get there, uh, give one of the guys you get on the store. They'll certainly be able to help you out uh, in the Victorian stores. So, uh, that brings me up to our... Uh, training dates and things like that. So now I've got uh, the GPX training dates, just a quick reminder. Again, Bendigo dates on Saturday the 8th of May. Um, I've got uh, also, I think it's the 23rd of May also available in Bendigo. Both of those are at 9am, so Saturday the 8th and uh, 9am Sunday the 23rd of May. Adelaide dates for our Adelaide GPX 6000 training, Saturday the 1st of May at 1pm and also uh, on Sunday the 6th of June, Sydney dates 1pm on Sunday the 30th of May and of course 1pm on Sunday the 29th of August. If you purchased a machine or a GPX 6000 for this training at the Minus Den Source, simply give the store a call and we can uh, get you booked in. It's free of charge if you purchase from us. If you haven't purchased uh, from us, you've got your machine elsewhere and you still want to experience MindLab's best training for their detectors, uh, just jump onto the website. It'll be a small fee. Book yourself in and get ready to learn. If you want to find out any more about those sessions and things like that, uh, jump onto the links, check out the website. One more quick reminder again, it's the first time that we've been able to get through uh, to starting up our demo days again. So our demo days, uh, just as a quick reminder, fantastic way for newbies and people who are looking to upgrade to learn what all the differences are about the MindLab machines. You'll certainly find that the MindLab machines um, uh, are the best machines. Having a run through of what it's all about gives you the information so that uh, you're going to be able to make an informed decision on which metal detector might suit your needs. 
like I said, depending on which store it's at, they take them down to the park uh, and go through what they all do for all those kind of things. So with that, there's uh, some dates there for those. Um, and the dates for that one are coming up uh, uh, on Melbourne is the 29th of May, along with Sydney on Saturday the 29th of May, and also Adelaide 29th of May. Um, there'll be a sausage sizzle at lunchtime, so uh, come along. Just book in online so we know how many people that we need to get you through, and uh, we can uh, cater for you there. You'll have a great day. You'll learn lots and lots about uh, all of the Mind Lab machines. So that's got all the dates done for the uh, training sessions. It's got the stuff done for the uh, demo days. And now we're just going to head into our quick tip for tonight, and that is identifying puddlers in the bush. G'day, I'm Lockie from Miners Den Bendigo, and tonight's quick tip on the Mine Lab show, we're gonna talk about how to identify a puddler and how far we can actually detect away from the puddler. So I'm out detecting in the bush. I've just come across a puddler. How do I know it's a puddler? Well, nothing really else looks quite like them. They look like a giant donut out in the bush. Now, what they were actually used for was the old timers weren't silly. They weren't gonna sit there and break up their corpse and clay by hand. The horse would actually walk around the inside of the puddler and break up the gold quartz specimens and the hard gravel packed clays. It's important to preserve our history of our gold fields, and that's why puddlers are protected by heritage. That means that we can't detect within 10 metres from the puddler. We have to take our measurement from the start of the outside of the puddler and outwards, not from the centre of the puddler. This puddler here is quite obvious to see. They come in all different sizes, so when you see a donut out in the bush, just stick 10 metres away from him. You can see behind me that there's another puddler. It's not as big as the other one, but it still looks exactly the same. Funnily enough, this puddler's only 10 metres away from the other puddler, so I know this area has quite a bit of gold in it. Knowing that the two puddlers are 10 metres apart from each other, I must go my separate ways from around them to make sure I'm not falling within that 10 metre radius. I'm Lockie from Miners Den Benigo, and that's been tonight's quick tip on the Mine Lab Show how to identify puddlers. Okay, that was a great little tip just on how to identify those puddling machines. That was one of the things that was the only pieces of technology that were really developed on the central Victorian gold fields. Um, so that brings us along now to our weekly viewer giveaway and we've got a ripper this week so um, to bring this out here I've got uh, our mine our, well, our mine lab a pro gold panning kit I've also got one of it and we'll make sure you can see that that's better I'll stand over this side get way out of the way uh, that's our pro gold panning kit um, it's uh, coming now with the very first bag of uh, Gold Digger Dave's Pay Dirt. And we're going to do a bit of a chat about the Pay Dirt just once we get through this. We've got three of these packs coming up, so it's a Pay Dirt and a Panning Kit. Um, all you've got to do, drop a comment into the feed, say hi, put up a photo, anything like that. Put you into the running to pick up uh, one of these uh, fantastic prizes. Pay Dirt and a Mind Lab Pro Gold Panning Kit. A perfect combination there. So keep watching uh, and I'll draw the winners uh, later on in the show for that, those prizes. So three prizes there, guys. And that now brings that out of the way. Just slip off the edge there, pay dirt. Thank you very much. Let's have a look. We've got our pay dirt, which is, as I had a bag out, and I'll bring it back out again, had a pay dirt bag. Pay dirt bags come in two sizes. So this is no ordinary pay dirt. This is uh, a Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet pay dirt. Now, this pay dirt, a 700 plus gram bag and a 950 plus gram bag, absolutely loaded with, uh, with gold and things like that. There's a lot of uh, pay dirt that's uh, bags that are doing the rounds um, at the moment, but Gold Digger Dave's uh, Gourmet pay dirt differs from all the rest of them. And it differs in a number of ways. 
uh, you're guaranteed to get some gold from each bag when you pan it correctly. So some will only have some small gold and things like in it, some will have some bigger stuff in it. Uh, each claim of pay dirt is uh, loaded with bonus nuggets and mini patches. So you can get in there, you can get a mini patch of gold in amongst it. Some of these patches uh, in the 700 gram bags go out at 15 grams. Uh, there's some 10 gram patches there. A number of other smaller ones scattered throughout all the bags. If you get in a larger bag, um, then you'll find that there's approximately uh, 31 grams of, um, uh, well, there's not 31 grams, there's patches in there of 31 grams of gold. Now, look, this is the first release of the pay dirt um, uh, from uh, the Poseidon claim, which was first rushed back in 1906. And the nugget found there was named after the winner of the Melbourne Cup that year, Poseidon. Modern day miners uh, are still recovering uh, more gold from the area and uh, that's uh, where our pay dirt comes from. So it's actually uh, the real deal. It's from a working mine. Uh, just to wet your appetite of what this area was like, I did some research and uh, we found out some information on uh, the Poseidon area and the nuggets that came out of there for its size. More large nuggets have come from this area or this lead than any other in the world, including the following. This is the following. This is an amazing amount of nuggets. There was a 703 ounce. There was a 675. There were 13 other nuggets over 100 ounces. 19 between 50 and 99 ounces. 52 between 20 and 49 ounces and 208, that's right, 208 between 1 and 19 ounces. One story went that uh, if you're on right in the heart of that Poseidon lead, uh, the old times used to say you could get up to 3,600 ounces, that's right, 3,600 ounces from the surface of a standard claim. Now look, with Gold Digger Dave's uh, gourmet pay dirt, uh, you not only got a chance of uh, picking up a, a nice patch of gold as you would if you were panning out in the field, uh, but you've also got the opportunity to get some, one of our collectible uh, treasure hunting tokens. Uh, these can be redeemed online uh, or in store. Now, this is how it works. Each of these tokens are, are being scattered amongst some bags. So the bronze tokens get you $10 off your next purchase at Miner's Den or at minersden.com.au. The silver token uh, will get you $25 off your next purchase over $50. And uh, of course the gold token, uh, our best token uh, is $50 off any purchase when you spend $100 or more. So look, if you don't score, uh, so if you do score a token, don't throw it away. Even if you don't want to use a discount, it's still a very, very good test target. Now you'll also find um, to use that discount, simply uh, key the code on the token into our um, coupon area when you check out on the website or just bring it into the store and uh, they'll put your discount through for you. Now the first batch of uh, this Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt uh, from the Poseidon claim is now available at minersden.com.au. Get in quick. There's only a limited number of uh, bags available in our first run um, and they're in the stores across uh, uh, all of our stores, the Mine Lab Metal Detector Super stores, there's uh, uh, St Mary's in South Australia, there's Mitcham in Melbourne and of course our new store Penrith in uh, New South Wales or Sydney and Bendigo where we're coming from tonight in the central Victorian gold fields. If you're heading into store though guys, just uh, Plan ahead, check, uh, ring up, get your bag paid for because they will sell very, very quickly uh, in this first batch. So just to give you an indication, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the live I did this morning. In the first batch, uh, uh, there's fine and nuggety gold. Um, and in total from the first batch, there's more than 19 ounces of gold valued over $50,000 for the first batch of um, uh, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. So get in quick, 
get your share, pan it off. If you're getting uh, things uh, happening, I'll give you some pricing on it now. Pricing on the, the bags is the 700 gram bag of uh, concentrates, comes in at 79.95. Now, I think that's got postage and everything thrown in it for you. If you want to grab the larger bag, that's 950 plus grams of concentrate. It's going to go in at around about $133. Look, if you get one of these fantastic um, bonuses or mini patches, as we're calling them in Gold Digger Dave's Pay Dirt, please be sure to share them on social uh, because there are some lucky people that will get, as luck of the draw, will be able to just get um, uh, the... We'll certainly be able to get the uh, patch of 10, 15, maybe smaller nuggets in amongst it there. There's plenty in there. There's plenty of bags that have got it in there. There's plenty of tokens and everything like that. So grab a bag and uh, pan off as you need to. So that is our um, pay dirt uh, spotlight. Keep watching uh, and we will draw those at the end of the show. So once we get through all of those 50 grams we got through, fantastic, very good pay dirt. As a matter of fact, I'd go to say that it is actually uh, the world's best or richest pay dirt, certainly in Australia. Make sure you don't miss out on getting your share of 50k worth of uh, gold that are in these bags. Um, yep, that's all I need to say about pay dirt. It should be live on the feed now. We're just going to quickly jump in next and have a look at our top tip, wet weather use of a GPX 5000. G'day, I'm Lucky from Miners Den Bendigo and tonight's top tip on the Mine Lab show I'm going to be sharing some tips with you on some wet weather detecting with the GPX 5000. On the GPX 5000 the control box which is the business end just here is actually not waterproof it's water resistant so when a bit of cloud cover comes over and some rain there's a couple of things we can have in our control box cover that'll save us the day. So a little bit of wet weather is approaching it's time to cover up the detector. The few things that I need, and I just put them inside of my control box, a plastic shopping bag from Woolies, and a poncho. Now you might ask, why do I have a shopping bag from Woolies in my detector? Well, it's very simple. It helps me keep the control box dry. It's very, very easy to put on. We just fold him out, cover the detector up like so, And then, use the handles and tie it up. Like a little bow, just like that. Now I've done that, I've put my poncho on, keep myself dry and my speaker. Now that I'm all covered up, I've got my speaker covered, but I've also got my battery covered as well. And that helps to not let any little bits of water get down in where your speaker goes in or your power cable. Now bear in mind, just having all this stuff on, it doesn't mean I can keep detecting. I must head back to the car and get out of this weather. So I'm back at the car, the weather's passed, uh, it's time to take off all this stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is take off my control box cover. I just want to check if there's any moisture in there. I'll take him off. I'm just going to sit this bag here, be careful it doesn't blow away. I'm going to take off my cover. And you can see I've got a nice towel here. There is a little bit of moisture that's gotten in before I put the, the shopping bag on, so I'm just going to give it a dry off, alright? Keep it all nice and dry. All done. Our rubbish bag here also is dual purpose. When I take my poncho off, I'm going to put it in that rubbish bag so I can throw it in the bin when I get home. And there you go guys, simple as that. So there you go guys, there's some top tips on how you can go detecting in wet weather. As long as the weather is intermittent rain and not bucketing down, we should be fine. I'm Lockie from Miners Den Bendigo and that's been tonight's top tip on the Mine Lab Show. 
Okay, that's another fantastic tip there from Lockie. So uh, thank you for that, Lockie. Really appreciate it. Uh, that brings us up next to our store offer. Now, this is a pretty important one at the moment, so we're going to slow down a little bit here and just go through it. Uh, tonight's uh, product spotlight is focusing on uh, the Miner's Den MineLab certified second-hand detectors. Now, this is very, very important at the moment. It's a great initiative from uh, uh, Miner's Den, the largest reseller of uh, MineLab uh, metal detectors uh, here in Australia. Um, what it does is it, with uh, people wanting to trade up to new machines and things like that, it means people can purchase second-hand detectors with confidence knowing that the machine's been uh, checked out by Australia's largest uh, independent service agency for, for MineLab. Um, this means that they get a good machine, they know it's working, it's got a warranty with it and all that kind of thing. Um, and our guys have seriously checked right over these. The sellers, uh, on the other hand, are also over the moon because they can get a better, um, uh, because they can get a better resale price for their actual uh, detector um, by knowing that uh, people knowing that they can buy a second-hand detector from us, um, and uh, the buyers know that they get the right machine. Now, there's a one-off charge uh, of $169 to cover the uh, the listing and uh, cleaning fees and all that kind of thing. Um, when the item sells, we charge 2.8% on the total sales price to cover the transaction costs. So it's very, very competitive compared to what you get when you go to eBay's or some of those other places to list. The other advantage is you know that your machine is going to be checked out. Uh, so if you're looking for a fantastic second-hand unit, it's a great time now because we have many people coming in who are wanting to bring their pre-loved machines in to sell and uh, then are moving up to uh, a later model mine lab detector. So there's lots of really, really good detectors out there at the moment. So with that, um, uh, mine lab certified second-hand detectors available exclusive to miners, then uh, get the machine that's operating the best it can. And you'll find when we go through and check these out, we're checking our coils, we're doing a whole range of tests on the machine to make sure it's as it should be performing. Now, when we do that, we're going to find that um, you'll get lots of uh, you'll get lots and lots of uh, people coming in who are bringing in things, and sometimes coils will be wrong and all that. We're actually to weed out all of that stuff and then not have any more um, problems uh, with the machines uh, once we've got them all back up to working order. And I really think that uh, the people that are buying the machines appreciate that they're getting a machine that they know is working and the sellers loving the fact that they're getting better value for their machines than they can get when selling them elsewhere. So that's the Mind Lab uh, uh, certified second-hand detectors. Uh, we're going to take it now into a presentation this time, and we've got our resident panner, Shane, about to take us through panning a bag of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Hi, it's Shane from Miners Den in Bendigo here. I've got a bit of time off from the shop, so I've got some of Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. And I've got a Mine Lab 15 inch Pro Gold pan, and we're going to pan the, the Pay Dirt off to see what gold's inside. So I've got my 700 gram bag of Pay Dirt, which is guaranteed to have gold in it. I'm just going to open it up and tip it into our gold pan. Give it a real good tap to make sure we get all the pay dirt out of the bag. So we've got the pay dirt in the pan. I'm just going to dip the pan into the water and give it a good stir. Remember gold being heavy, we'll go down to the bottom of the pan. Might be a few lumps of dirt in the pay dirt, so just break all that up. Okay, so it's all mixed up. Um, any little balls of clay and dirt have been um, dissolved. So now we just proceed the pan. Put some more water in, start shaking. Get all that gold down to the bottom of the pan. So just keep a bit of water in there. Make sure the large ripples of the pan are facing forward and just j gradually Tip the pan a little bit forward so that the lighter material 
will go out of the pan and the gold will be left in the bottom of the pan. I don't go too far. Every now and again I'll just take it back down flat again. Make sure the gold's back to the bottom of the pan and then gradually angle it forward again to let the lighter material go out over the edge of the pan. Okay, so I've got about two teaspoons of dirt left in the pan. I've just swapped over um, to the finer riffles and we're going to be gentle now of just getting a little bit more of the lighter material out of the pan and that should reveal the gold left in the corner of the pan. Just add some water, give it a shake, make sure the gold's down in the corner of the pan and just tilt it forward, let the lighter material go over the edge of the pan, just gently bit more water. Just take it down a bit flat again. Make the gold settle. Use the water to help shift the lighter material. Until I've got about half a teaspoon of dirt left. I'm just going to tilt the pan back and just gently let the water just flick over the remaining dirt and that should reveal the gold. So that's it folks, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, a guaranteed way to find some gold. I'm Shane from Miner's Den in Bendigo. Come and grab some and have some fun. Okay, well, thanks for that, Shane. That's fantastic. Uh, very, very good effort there. This pay dirt is just walking out uh, off the website at the moment. So, look, those of you getting a bag, if you get a patch, please share it to our Facebook or uh, to our uh, Instagram accounts. Uh, love to see the people who are, are going to get the, the, the great patches of gold. And there's some many, many smaller nuggets in amongst the, the 50k worth of gold that's up for grab in Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. Keep getting in quick because if you're not in quick, you'll find that uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for us to get uh, more dirt batched up. Uh, the dirt that we've got here has come from the lead I was talking about earlier for those that missed it earlier. Uh, that, that dirt is from an area called Poseidon, which is just out of Tarnagulla in Victoria. Um, a, a working mine, uh, the dirt has been classified so it's concentrated down for you. Um, it's got lots and lots of uh, gold and uh, of course our tokens and things in it. So to get your share of 50k in gold, jump straight onto the website. Not everyone's going to get their money back, uh, it's just the way it is, but some of them, uh, two grand worth of gold for an outlay of uh, 133 bucks or even uh, $1,000 worth of gold when you spend 79.95. not a bad return if you happen to be lucky enough to score one of the uh, bags that have got some of the patches and things in it. So that's uh, all on the pay dirt just for the moment. Get in quick because like I said, it is walking out the door as I speak. Now we're going to move on to our viewer questions for today. So I've got a viewer question that's up on the screen there at the moment that uh, is from David Rowe. Um, now, uh, thanks for the question, Dave. Um, uh, Dave was asking uh, when he's using his double D coil on a GPX 5000, it has discrimination. Yeah, well, that's correct. It does on a GPX 5000. Um, uh, and then... Uh, it does the GPX 6000 have this capability at all? Well, look, uh, yes, on the 5000, definitely, but the 6000 doesn't have any discrimination on it at all. So with the 6000, you dig every target. Now, there's a number of reasons why we don't typically have uh, the discrimination on most of the serious uh, uh, prospecting, um, gold prospecting machines. Most people will dig every target if they're a serious uh, gold prospector. Discriminations are apparently difficult to achieve with gold nuggets due to the variety of metals and other uh, host rock and things that are uh, associated with the nugget. 
um, if you start trying to knock out um, things with discrimination, uh, you're going to find that it covers a very wide spectrum and in amongst those bits of junk there are pieces of gold that will lie as well. Um, so uh, you don't do it for that reason. The other reason is if you have a large target, uh, then you will also find that uh, the iron will actually blank out that large target or a large piece of iron there will actually blank out the ground surrounding it. So when you blank out the ground surrounding it, you find that um, uh, you will knock out the, the, the other targets that are in the area in the first place. However, if you remove the iron target, uh, then uh, that'll uncover anything that might be uh, nuggets and things that might be hidden underneath that area that were potentially not seen uh, because of the iron target that, that blanked out around them. Many times, over 25, 30 years uh, running around out in the field digging nuggets, um, uh, I've picked up uh, bits of gold from other people's holes. They've dug the hole, they've done most of the work, maybe they got a piece of gold when they um, went out. Once they got that piece of gold, uh, they didn't come back and remember to check their uh, hole. And when they didn't remember to check their hole, they, uh, they left uh, targets behind. In one spot, I actually got seven targets out of, uh, one, out of one lot of holes that uh, someone had dug uh, and hadn't completed out yet. So always go back, go over, check your holes. If you want the best advice, dig every target. I know it can sometimes be a pain when you dig out uh, large objects down deep or little tiny bits of lead all the time, but that's the way that you're going to get the majority of the gold in the area. We all know that most of us don't get all the gold in an area. So that was uh, there from uh, Dave. Thank you very much, Dave, for your question there. And now we'll go on to another question I've got here. And um, uh, this one's from Guy Hamilton. So Guy's just asking, uh, what advice would you give uh, for increasing your chances of success while detecting on beaches? OK, well, one of the things I tend to look for on the beaches is I tend to dig, uh, I tend to use a dig a wider range of targets. This increases the chances of getting uh, uh, gold chains or chains and objects of a regular shaped uh, jewellery and that kind of thing. I also am very keen when I'm out on the beach to use a larger coil. Um, I can cover more ground quickly. I get a little bit more depth when I'm using that larger coil. So if I'm on a beach, that's, that's certainly what I want to be doing, using a larger coil, covering a lot of ground. Um, just like uh, the second part of the question there from Guy was just like indicators uh, for reading uh, Creek uh, for gold panning, are there better areas on a beach to detect? Look, there's many indicators that point to the smart treasure hunter to the best uh, places on the beach. If you have a look at the beach during the day, for example, uh, before you go for a hunt, and you look for where the people or the most number of people are on the beach, now, it might be at the base of a cliff because it's got a bit of shade at a certain time of the day. might be uh, right where the flags are, in between the swimming flags. Uh, if it's a large number of people there, this is a great spot for you to hunt. The more people in a place uh, can be, tends to indicate a little bit that you're able to actually... Uh, uh, more people, more drops, uh, you're more likely to pick something up. Another little joint that's probably worth looking at, there's a kiosk, a little uh, pop-up kiosk on the beach or something like that. Another great spot to go and uh, hunt after hours when it's shut. People are putting their hands into their pockets, they're pulling coins and things out, and uh, in doing that, uh, they, they do that when they go to buy their uh, refreshments and things from that little kiosk. Look, these are only a few of the very basic tips. Um, what I'm going to try and do, guys, I'm going to try and uh, put a presentation together for one of the episodes in the future and uh, we can take you a little bit more in depth into uh, a bit more detail about uh, where's the best spots to hunt on the beach. So once again, you're a regular uh, asking questions, really appreciate it, um, and uh, we'll try and get you a, a little segment uh, up for you to, to go a little bit more in depth on that. I've got another question from Billy uh, B. Um, Billy's asked, how popular is the Monster 1000 as a starter? Any reports on users finding things? Well, the Gold Monster 1000 is a great machine or an entry-level machine for gold. If you use the machine correctly, you can get multiple small nuggets um, over a period of time. And the trick is to using it uh, successfully. 
You're going to get a little bit of ground noise coming up from the ground mineralisation, but working slow and with the sensitivity set to the correct level, you'll have a fantastic detecting adventure. And I know many, many customers who come in and show me uh, the finds with their Gold Monster 1000. It happens to be quite regularly, and most of the time when they're finding gold with the, the Gold Monster, a lot of people are having success with the little 5-inch coil. The little 5-inch coil makes it a little bit more sensitive, um, and if you're targeting that smaller gold, then you'll find that um, uh, that's where you get an advantage over some of the, the more expensive machines if you can be able to target that small gold. A lot more small gold out there than uh, football-sized bits, so uh, target that, and you should go very well with a, with a gold monster. And on a similar one, I've now got a question from uh, Josh, and uh, Josh is saying that um, uh, he's asking how good is the Equinox 800 on gold? Um, I can probably do a clip uh, you're asking there as well. I probably can do a clip on that for you at some stage. The Equinox 800 is a great entry-level machine again, and it's probably, you know, similar standard to what you're getting in a, a Gold Monster 1000. Look, in all honesty, if you're only ever going to go out and hunt for gold, then the Gold Monster 1000 is fine. If you're wanting to hunt for some coins and relics, then it has a lot more options in the Equinox 800. It really is four machines in one. It has beach, park, field and gold modes. The other thing with the Equinox 800 is that it is also waterproof and comes with wireless headphones. So uh, you've got the wireless headphones, you've got the waterproof. That's a little bit of an advantage there. Uh, like I said, I'll try and get a clip uh, done for you there, Billy, uh, with a bit more information on that in a future show. But either way, if you're using a mine lab detector and walking around out in the gold fields, there's no doubt that sooner or later you're going to walk over some gold. And uh, either the Gold Monster or the Equinox 800 are fantastic machines. So thanks for, thanks for the question there, Josh. I really appreciate that. Um, we've got now coming up to uh, another question I've got here. Um, and this question's uh, come in uh, from uh, Poppy. And Poppy's been hearing some rumours or rumblings about some problems with the, the 6000 and sent through some information and stuff for, for me to review and have a look at. Uh, look, thanks for all the, the information and thanks for the question. Um, I went through and had a look at a lot of the information that's there. Um, I think you're also wondering, Poppy, about looking at a 6000 or a 7000. Okay. Poppy was wondering, because of these uh, rumours that are out there, that there's a problem with the 6,000. There's not a problem with the 6,000. There was a, a very small number, and I think it was less than uh, what you can count on one hand, that were, uh, had any issues with, uh, with the, um, the little clip on it. It's a very, very easy fix, uh, five seconds. Um, we've already been in and fixed one, but that's the only one we've seen across four stores selling these machines uh, all over... Uh, all over the country. Now, it's not hard to be repaired. Um, it's not a problem. All of these electronic uh, things that come out always have some teething problems. It doesn't matter whether you buy a TV and a brand new model of the car uh, or a detector. There's always some little bits and pieces. These are nothing serious. And you know that with um, your comfortable, you know that Mind Lab are um, going to stand behind you. Now, look, if I were uh, if I wanted a, a 6000 and were comfortable with spending the 8K on the machine, um, there is uh, none of the issue that has been put up on Facebook there uh, would stop me from uh, getting uh, going out and buying the machine. I wouldn't delay the purchase. In almost every launch of MindLab machines, the guys who get out there first uh, with the gold machines and go back over their old patches with the new technology uh, are going to get more gold. They get out before there's been lots and lots of machines out on the gold fields. Um, and like with this machine, it's gonna take two, three, four years before we start to see a lot of people out there with the, um, with the, the machines in the gold fields. So, just slowing it down a little bit there, there's, um, uh, there's not an issue at the moment with um, uh, there's not an issue at all uh, at the moment with the machine and the way it operates out in the field. Uh, if you're out there, the people that are out there using it are finding a heck of a lot of gold with it. In the 25 years that uh, I've been dealing with my lab, 
uh, their warranty and service has been second to none. If there was ever a problem, uh, uh, they fixed it. It was just that simple. I don't expect the support for the GPX 6000 uh, is going to be any different than their, their usual high standard. So I wouldn't be phased at all about uh, these one or two minor issues that occur when something's released. But if you do have an issue, then always welcome to call our Mine Lab Authorised Service Centre at the Bendigo store and we can take you through a few things over the phone. If you happen to be in, uh, drop in. We can repair and service your detectors exactly the same as if it was done at the Mine Lab factory. And our service centre is actually staffed by Mine Lab trained technicians. So we've really uh, nailed this pretty well here, guys. Uh, uh, you'll be looked after. These problems are only just teething problems when Mine Lab released the machine. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's very, very little uh, in them. There's uh, only a handful of machines, so it's not large numbers. And from my understanding, it's not a, not a problem that is uh, going to cause any dramas uh, when you're out prospecting. Most people's machines are perfectly fine and my lab have captured the, uh, the small number of less than a handful that uh, needed to, to be looked at. So uh, I would not uh, hesitate in buying a machine at the moment. So that brings me on now to um, our uh, next section. Well, one more section here. I've got a, a question here from Jennifer who, uh, uh, if she was a beginner, she's beginning a detecting uh, career by the sounds of what the question is there. Um, she's asking, is a 6,000 a good option um, for a bit of everything? Golden relics. It seems uh, to be everybody's talking about at the moment. Well, look, um, Jennifer, no, the 6000 is a fantastic option if you wanted to go out and hunt for, um, uh, <coughs> sorry, go out and hunt for gold. It's not an all-round machine, um, and uh, if you're wanting an all-rounder, you're probably going to drop a little bit of, um, uh, you're probably going to drop a little bit of performance in your gold side of it. So uh, the 6000 Fantastic for a beginner if they're wanting to go out and hunt for gold. If you're looking for coins and relics and things, then you're probably going to need something along the lines of an Equinox 800, an Equinox 600. If you want the whole hog and the very best, then you can combine an Equinox uh, 800 or 600 with a 6000. You've got yourself two machines, one that's fantastic on the uh, coins and relics and also one that is great for hunting the gold. So uh, the 6000 is a great uh, beginner's machine there. Now I've got another question here from uh, David. It's just back a little bit from David. He was asking about a 6000 um, and all the talk about uh, how much we're pumping this machine up and everything like that. Look, the GPEG 6000 is much, much better than uh, its predecessors. Um, it's targeting the small gold. I'm seeing results coming in with people coming in with 20, 30, 40 little pieces of gold regularly from uh, throughout the gold fields around uh, Bendigo. I'm sure it's happening right across the country. Uh, this technology, and especially I believe the GeoSense uh, PI that's in the 6000, uh, puts it streets ahead of what we've been able to do previously in the GPX range. Your GP Z7000 is still a fantastic unit for uh, the top of the line gold prospecting detector um, but the 6000 at the moment is my choice of weapon when I am uh, get a few minutes spare to get out and uh, have a run around out in the bush. So uh, it is as good as what uh, we're calling it, uh, we've seen the results, uh, we've been out with it, we've uh, had some opportunities uh, to see what it does over a, a reasonable period of time and it'll be digging gold for a, a long while to come yet. So, lots of questions there. Thank you to all the people who put the questions in. Uh, really appreciate it. It makes it easier if I can get some answers uh, uh, prepared beforehand and uh, make sure I'm giving you all the correct information. So, with that, we're going to move on now to this week's Gold Hotspot. And the Gold Hotspot this week is Kalgoorlie. Let's have a look. Kalgoorlie is a town in the Eastern Goldfields region of Western Australia, located 595 kilometres northeast of Perth. It is also referred to as Kalgoorlie Boulder, as the surrounding urban area includes the historic town site of Boulder. Kalgoorlie Boulder is built on one of the richest gold deposits in the world. 
gold was first discovered in the region in June 1893. Paddy Hannon and Thomas Flanagan, two Irish prospectors, were following rumours of gold finds at Mount Yuley when on their travels they decided to stop for some prospecting due to the gold-bearing look of the region. During this time, Hannon spotted Daniel Shea, another Irish prospector he knew, passing through and invited him to join. Within a week, the trio had collected an estimated 100 ounces of gold. On the 17th of June, with his saddlebags weighed down by nuggets, Hannon went back to Coolgardie to apply for a reward claim. Whilst Hannon was away, Flanagan and Shea found another 100 ounces. When Hannon reached Coolgardie and news broke of the finds, the rush started. Within a week, more than 1,400 men were working the goldfield. Miners came in their hundreds and traders followed. The township quickly grew into a sizeable settlement covered in tents and shanties. Before Christmas 1893, there were more than 100 leases pegged. Companies started to mine the quartz reefs and lodes that had shed the alluvial gold deposits the early prospectors found. But it was the sensational gold deposits found a few kilometres south at Boulder that secured the region's future. The state government chose the name Kalgoorlie and the town was gazetted on September 4, 1894. The municipalities of Kalgoorlie and Boulder were amalgamated into the city of Kalgoorlie Boulder in 1989. Today, gold mining remains the principal industry in the region. Kalgoorlie Consolidated Gold Mines is the principal employer and operates the famously known Super Pit. Mining support and tourism are also important industries to the local economy. Currently, Kalgoorlie Boulder is Australia's largest outback city with a population of more than 30,000 people. As a city with a vibrant nightlife that never sleeps, an array of restaurants and shops, you're sure to be entertained. If you're looking for something more relaxing, there are a large range of guided and self-guided tours you can take in the region, as well as unique parks and bushlands perfect for picnics, barbecues or relaxing walks. The Kalgoorlie Boulder region is renowned for prospecting and fossicking. As a reminder, if you do plan to prospect, please check local government guidelines regarding permits. Don't forget to stop by the Kalgoorlie Boulder Visitor Information Centre located in Hannon Street for your guide to the goldfields and the region. Whatever the reason for your visit, you're guaranteed to discover a wealth of treasures set against the backdrop of a historic gold town, which is now a modern and vibrant city. Okay, so that was uh, our hotspot on uh, Kalgoorlie. I hope you all enjoyed that. Probably some of you heading over there maybe for the first time uh, for your uh, prospecting uh, in West Australia when it's cooler in the winter. Um, I hope you have a lot of luck over there. It looks like a great spot. I've been there a couple of times, uh, but uh, not for a while now. Look, now we're up to drawing the winners of uh, tonight's uh, viewer giveaway. So just to refresh your mind, a bag of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, one of the fantastic MineLab uh, panning kits. We've got three of those to give away tonight. So uh, congratulations to John M. Uh, John, you've won a panning kit and a bag of pay dirt. Kylie B, you've also won a panning kit and a bag of pay dirt. And Poppy L, congratulations. You've scored a bag and a panning kit as well. I hope you have a lot of fun with those. And I hope one of them uh, at least has some... Uh, some bigger nuggets and things in it. It's just purely luck of the draw. Uh, you'll certainly get some gold if you're uh, panning it correctly. And I quite often recommend that if you're starting out panning, there's no reason why you can't pan off into another uh, container, into a bucket or something like that, and repan the dirt a couple of times to make sure that you've got all the gold out of it. Well, before we go tonight, there's a look at what we've got coming up uh, on next week's show. So next week's show, uh, in a quick peek, is uh, we're going to have uh, a, great, a great quick tip. Um, again, a fantastic uh, news contributor coming along to the Mind Lab show. So that's going to be very interesting. We'll introduce him next week. Uh, the usual gold hotspot and, of course, our fantastic live viewer giveaways. Well, that's all I've got time for uh, tonight uh, on this week's show. 
I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den, and you've been watching The Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Remember, tune in next week for another episode of The Mine Lab Show. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector.